stand here so I can see you all, but I, I will hopefully um, be able to walk around and meet you as well. Um, today we are going to be talking in English some, and we are also going to be learning some math today. So, surprise! <laughs> but don't worry, I'm going to help you, okay? My goal is to help you learn to teach a subject like math or science or history in English. So I'm going to show you some strategies of how to do that. Um, before I get started, I will first give you a little introduction about myself. And I will warn you, I want you to also introduce yourself, not to me, not yet, but maybe to someone sitting next to you. Okay, so in English, so be ready. So I've given you a little bit of help. I, it's maybe a little hard to see, but I will read it as well. It says, hi, I am Adrian Johnson. When I am not teaching, I like to exercise, I run, I ride my bike, um, I swim, I do triathlons, uh, and I hike anything outdoors I like, spend time with my family. I have a daughter who is 13 and a daughter who is 10 and a husband. And they are all in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, very busy. They miss me, maybe a little, but they also love their friends, so I think they're okay. I have been teaching for about 21 years, and I have been teaching EMI for about 18 years. When I first started teaching, I was teaching in Korea, and then I moved to Chicago and taught science. I was a science teacher for middle school, but all of my students were English learners. They spoke Spanish as their first language. So I had to teach science, but surprise, we couldn't use the textbook. Surprise, they couldn't write very well. Surprise, they didn't know very much science. They didn't have very good preparation. So I had to learn to be creative to be created. After that, I went and taught uh, elementary school, third grade, in a bilingual school. So half of our day was in Spanish and half of the day was in English. So we taught math all in Spanish, we taught history all in English, and the students learned in both languages. Okay. Now I teach at the college level and I teach teachers in the United States who are going to teach English learners. Many of the English learners are refugees. Do you know refugees? So they come from other countries. Um, many times they have missed a lot of school. So they, their academics, their science, their math, their reading may or may not be good. And their English, they may not know any English. But the teachers have to teach all the subjects in English. So it's very challenging, so we have to be creative. And that's my goal today, okay? So to warm up your brains, to get them ready for English, for you speaking English today, I want you to please find one person around you. So turn around, find a partner that you can say hi to. Introduce yourself and say, when I am not studying, maybe, when I am not studying, I like to what? Okay, so find someone next to you. If you need to, stand up and find someone. And please introduce yourself to someone new. Try, go ahead. Thank 
So content-based instruction helps students prepare to use English in school or work settings. It increases student engagement and motivation in the content. How's my Mandarin? Good? Okay. I tried very hard. <laughs> Teaching academic English content in English requires planning. It takes a lot of planning. It's not easy. In my instruction is not easy. But if you get better at it with practice. So my first year of teaching science in English to Spanish speakers, it was not easy. I worked very, very hard. My second year, I worked very, very hard. My third year, I worked very, very hard. My fourth year, I still worked hard, but maybe not very, very hard, okay? And it gets easier. But it takes a lot of creativity, which can be fun, too. So I love teaching still today. It's very fun for me. But it's because I have learned to be creative. So if the students are having fun, then I also am going to have fun. If the students are bored, I am also bored as a teacher. So EMI instruction requires some creativity, and that's a good thing. You do need to give students language support. You have to help them with their English. I think many of you are English teachers and you say, okay, I know that. I know they need help with grammar and vocabulary. But they also need help with the content. They need help with the math or the science or the business or the music. They need help with both. So as a teacher, you have to think of both. And then this last one is very important. You have to have high expectations. You have to believe that students can succeed. You know it's hard for them, but as a teacher, you believe they can understand the content, and you believe they can understand the English. If you can do these, you will be good at EMI teaching. Okay? I promise I won't be talking too long. Okay? Just a little here at the beginning. So how does it enhance learning? So social language, maybe if you think about your English class, what topics did you talk about in your English class in high school or elementary? What topics? What did you learn in your English classes? Actually, forgot all Yeah, right, yeah. absolutely. So it, it wasn't very strong learning, maybe. What are some, what are some topics? Did you learn? Hobbies? Did you learn how to order food, maybe? How to make a friend? Say hello, what's your hobby? Yeah, maybe? In okay. High school, like in elementary school. Elementary school. Yes. school. Yeah, and middle school. So that's social language. Usually, non EMI teaching, just teaching English. You learn social English, hobbies, travel, the weather, making friends, cooking, going to the store. Those are all social language. It's good if you're going to travel. If my Mandarin was better, traveling would be easier. I ordered bubble tea the other day, but it was all in Mandarin, and I forgot the bubbles. So I just got tea. <laughs> So I need to learn bubbles and then you can it here. Okay? It's usually easy to learn. It takes elementary school or middle school. You can learn some social language. That's different from what? You know? What's it different from? Social language content. versus content, yes, or academic language. Academic language is language at school, not in English class, but here at college. The English that your teachers use at college or high school. If you are going to work in a business, your students might work in a business where they 
speak English. Okay? That's a different type of English. They need to understand computer language. They need to understand technology language. They need to understand budgets. Do you know what a budget is? Money? Yes. Money, right? Okay? It takes a lot of time. It takes at least five years, at least, sometimes closer to eight years, before you can be good at it. So if you start learning math and English in kindergarten or first grade as a child, when might you understand math well? Yeah, even later. So kindergarten, maybe what, five years old? Yes. So 10, 13, 14, 15. And that's if math is all in English every day. It's very hard. It's very hard to learn academic English. So if you right now, if English is a little hard for you in college, that's OK, because it takes a long time and a lot of time. So, do you remember science class in high school? Which picture was your science class? Point to it. Which picture was your science class? Yeah. Was this you? Yes. <laughs> Did your teacher use a textbook and talk a lot? Okay. So, you can talk a lot in your native language, because the students understand. So they listen. They might fall asleep, okay, but they understand. In an EMI classroom, they don't understand as well. So talking to them, lecture, is not as helpful. Reading a textbook is not as helpful. They, they don't understand it. So if I'm teaching science, I have to do what? Do you know? What's she doing? Experiments. Experiments. Did any of you have a teacher who did lots of experiments? So, anyone have a good science teacher? Don't tell your teachers. <laughs> <laughs> so, in my classroom in middle school, we did lots of experiments all the time because they couldn't read the textbook. They learned the science. But we had to be creative. And it was fun. We had a lot of fun. I love science still. I love science better as a teacher than I did as a student because I had to be creative. Okay? All right. So now we get to learn the six features. Okay? There's a lot of English up here. <laughs> So I'm going to tell you six features. Features are components or parts. How do you teach a good EMI lesson? These are based on the five Cal principles. So this is research. The five Cal principles are research for good EMI teaching. I took these Cal five principles and I changed them to six for EMI teaching. These are for teaching mostly in the US. It's a little different type of teaching. The six features are for teaching here in Taiwan. Okay. Yes. Okay, so take a moment and read these. Take a picture. Because we're this is what we're talking about the rest of today, these six features. I'm going to talk about each one of these, and we are going to practice. We're going to practice okay. with math. Oh, <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> OK. So I'm going to read them first. This is a good time, if you don't know a word, to maybe look it up. So use Google Translate. Look up the word. Okay. We're going to talk about these a lot today. 
but this is a good time to translate any words you don't know. So the first one is explicit vocabulary instruction. Explicit means I say a word, we practice the word, I teach you the word, we use the word. Explicit means careful and purposeful. Okay. So explicit vocabulary instruction is the most important step. If you are doing EMI teaching, we have to learn lots of vocabulary because that is what's hard, is the vocabulary. We also need lots of opportunities for students to practice language with your peers. Who are your peers? What's another word? What's a synonym or another word for peers? Maybe friends, friends classmates. classmates, peers. So you already today, you practiced English a little with your peers. We were warming up our brains and getting ready. Okay, so we need lots of opportunity. You will talk today, but I'm going to help you. Okay, and mistakes are okay in this class. You do not have to be perfect. You just have to try. Okay, I am more happy if you try and make a mistake than if you don't try. Okay, all right. We also need interesting, you know interesting, and authentic, you know the word authentic? Real, yes, authentic means real content. So if we are learning about um, the water cycle, do you know what the water cycle is? Evaporation, condensation in the clouds, and then rain, precipitation, okay? We might go outside and see the rain, and see the clouds, and see what is happening. Or we might do an experiment in a bottle, okay? That's real, authentic, not in a book. A book, a textbook is not authentic, okay? You also need engaging pedagogy. Pedagogy? What is pedagogy? Strategies, teaching, methods, yes, okay. Engaging means interesting, okay. So what I am doing now, not engaging pedagogy, okay. Don't worry, we will get there. But lecture is usually not engaging pedagogy. Sometimes you need lecture. For a short time, I need to share some information. So I need some lecture, but not only lecture. It's important to use engaging pedagogy. Scaffolded materials, activities, and resources. I'm going to teach you the word scaffolded. Do any of you know the word scaffolded? Scaffolding. Scaffolding. Okay. All right, we'll talk about that a little bit more later, but it's, it's help. You have to help students. So an example, I gave you, actually, I'll ask you. I gave you some help when you spoke to each other in English. What help did I give you? Yes, the sentences, do you remember? I gave you the sample sentences. Oops. yourself? Yes, uh, harder, right? It's harder. But to talk to your peers is easier. That's scaffolding. That's help. These are simple 
right? Simple strategies to help an EMI. Some sample sentences, talking to peers, those are very simple. Everything we will do today, it's not difficult, but it takes a little creativity and thinking, planning, okay? All right, so let's talk about explicit vocabulary instruction. So when you are teaching an EMI lesson, there may be some translanguaging. Translanguaging. Trans means across. Transatlantic, so if you're in an airplane and you have a transatlantic flight, you're going across the Atlantic Ocean. So translanguaging, you're switching between Mandarin and English. Sometimes you're using English, sometimes you might use Mandarin. But you are preparing when you use each one. You need some Mandarin, it, it's important, but you have to think about when. Usually at the beginning of a lesson, when you are introducing the vocabulary, you will use Mandarin and English. So Mandarin here is going to be the L1, language one, your native language. L2 is English. So you're going to demonstrate and show the vocabulary. What subject are we learning today? Math. So I'm going to be showing you some math. Math words. And you are going to be able to use Google Translate. I'm going to let you up. Okay? Because when you're learning the words, you need a little bit of help. A little bit of scaffolding. In the middle of the lesson, when you're practicing, I'm going to ask you, please use English and maybe not translate. Sometimes, though, I'll say it's OK to translate, but mostly use the English. So when should you use all your translation? At the beginning, <laughs> OK? So be ready when it's time. Use as much as you can. We're going to use some scaffolding, peer activities, group activities, that will help you. Maybe the Mandarin can't help you, but you can use each other. You will be able to help each other. And then at the end, mostly again the English, sometimes if you're confused, we would switch to a little Mandarin or look up information, okay? That's translanguaging, going back and forth and using both languages, but very carefully. Very careful. All right, so we are going to practice. We're going to introduce some vocabulary here. So I am going to be giving you cards. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to be giving you cards, and I want you to be in groups. I'm counting in my head. Um, groups of two, I think, should be okay. We might have a couple groups of three. Okay, so you're going to be in groups of two or three. Um, let's start with two, and then if, if I need to, I might combine some groups. I'm going to give you cards. They look like this, card. You're going to look at the words, and you're going to sort them put them in different categories, okay? This is a good time that you can use Google Translate, okay? You can translate, the L2 is okay, or the L1 is okay. You can sort them any way you want. That's why it's called an open word sort. I'm not giving you the categories, you pick the categories, okay? So any way you want. When it's time for you to be done. We'll take maybe just a few minutes, maybe five minutes to do this, okay? When we are done, what's my signal that we need to finish? Okay, so I'll raise my hand and then finish what you're doing. It's okay if you have to finish one more word, but then stop and get ready for the next, the next step, okay? Are you ready? Find a partner, at least one other person, 
and point at the person who's your partner. One, two, three. Okay, so we need it. We need maybe a couple of threes. So one, two, three, four, and six. So maybe. Can one of you come in this group here, and one of you come in this group over here? No, we are doing three. Actually, can the two of you maybe come here and work together? We can do four. Okay, so that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's it. You can move to the floor if you want to get closer. So clear your desk. Clear your desk. So you have room. Thank you. 
Which did you use the most? <laughs> <laughs> what percent Chinese versus English? Maybe 95% Chinese, 5% English? Okay, so now I want you to try to use a little more English. I have given you more cards. You need to match the cards. Match the cards. So you may look now. Again, about four minutes this time. Try to match the cards. It is okay to use your translation again. Google Translate is okay still. 